Hey, good morning everybody. We're going to do another solar and wind home power bill video. It's October the 19th. We just got our bill for October. And y'all, it's been kicking. Now solar, the first thing you will remember, the weather and solar power are the key to everything. You get good weather, like sunny, partly cloudy, that kind of stuff. Some wind, you're going to have great renewable energy. Uh, that's the main thing to remember. Weather, if you have a solar system, uh, like I have, you want, you know, or anybody, you want a good weather uh, station, a uh, personal weather station like uh, Davis or whatever brand you choose, but a good weather station will help you monitor your temperatures and because if it's real, if it's hot, anything over 70 some degrees, the less panel um, the, um, the less power the solar panel will put out. On a colder day, a colder during the winter, you'll make more power because if the solar panel is cool, the crystals and the cells stay cooler and they, they produce more heat. I mean, it's like an engine. If an engine in a, like a car, a vehicle, a gasoline engine that is, or if, it's run, if it runs cool, it runs better. So solar panels, the same thing. They're, if they're cooler, they run better. So that's basically it. And the power has just been phenomenal. Good power, power bill this month. Everything's working superb. Everything's working great. Um, as you know, my system's a hybrid, um, which means off grid or grid tie or grid tie slash load sharing. All right. I'm not getting paid by the power company, but I'm getting, um, kind of breaking even. You know, I'm paying my monthly fee to be hooked up to the grid and all that kind of stuff. But it's working out great. Uh, so, this month of October, we use zero kilowatt hours, like zero, $8.40. Okay. And a lot of that was uh, my, my tax, my county tax and just being hooked up to the grid that, that was it um so I'm, i'll run th through what i'm running and what i don't run this month we had the we had heat on a couple times because it got down to like the 50s at night we turned the heat on for a little while uh the electric um i got a carrier three ton heat pump then we ran uh we ran the air conditioner most of the time because it's, it it's been a hot month it's, it's been up in the 90s, humidity has been out of sight. Like anything, anything of from 80 during the day to 99% at night humidity. So we had to run an air conditioner because you open up the windows, just be a mu muggy humidity coming in the house, and it's hard to sleep at night like that. For, more for us anyway. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of what we got, and hey y'all, it's just it's super. Oh yeah, a lot of people ask me this question: How much I got invested in solar? All right. I have about 25 grand, all right, invest in solar, but that is over since 2009. Okay, this is now 2017. I've uh, been it for a um, little over eight years now, and it's working great. So I get 30%, I have been getting 30% tax credit from the government on all my purchases I made and everything, everything I did with solar, if I buy a tool, do it work with solar or panels, equipment, wiring, ca battery cables, this, that, batteries, 30% tax credit you get on that stuff. So if you spent $5,000, um, let's say $5,000 on batteries, you get a, uh, I didn't spend that much on batteries, but just, just for example, you get a 30% tax credit which per of your purchase. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. You get, I mean, you know, that's for the U.S. that is, you know, federal income um, taxes, uh, tax credit. So, 25 grand, give or take a few, because uh, 25 grand, but since 2009, I mean, my gosh, that's, that's not bad at all. Say, so a lot of people say, have you paid for your system? Yeah, my system's been paid for. Okay, how I know how much I'm saving my electric bill, my neighbors, Thank goodness they're great neighbors. Um, my one neighbor um, has a house 
almost identical to mine, but bigger. But, but they don't have a like a 1,100 square foot chop or a lot of these outbends or a swimming pool or a hot tub. But their house is like 100 square feet bigger than ours. Ours is 1,500, theirs is like 1,650, well, 150 square feet bigger. Okay, their bill averages 150 to 250 a month. So if I'm only paying um, $8.40 a month, I mean, right there, I'm saving almost $200 a month. I mean, most of the time, their bill is $200 a month. I'm saving, I mean, $200 a month times 12, that's $2,400 a year. Okay, over a 10-year period, that's what, $24,000. So, anyway, I've been in it for now for over eight years. So, at $2,400 a year, plus the 30% tax credit, I mean, it's done. It's done deal. It's, done. it's been paid for itself. Plus, the main thing I like, everybody said, would you do that to save money and this and that? Or uh, the main reason I did it, because of power outages. All right, power outages. We've had, in, here in Virginia, in Southern Virginia, we've had ice storms. We've had hurricanes. I mean, where the power would be out for two or three weeks, you have, you have a thunderstorm come through. Bam, power's out two or three days. This in this part of the country is like in a rural area, a little neighborhood in a rural area, it's just knocked out. And, and they're gonna get to the, the bigger neighborhoods first or the bigger areas first, but and we're like the last one on the on the grid to get taken care of. So I like to keep my, if I, if I, I want to just keep my refrigerators going, my deep freezers for my food and have a way to cook and have a way to have water. Main things you gotta remember when you're power outage. Food, water, all right, food, water, and and the rest of the stuff is just luxuries. I and mean, we do have a t way to operate a TV through the solar power. We have enough power to operate TV. We have antenna TV. Of course, we got cable, but once the power goes out, the cable is gone. So antenna, an antenna, um, HD antenna is a good investment to get if you are power if you're planning on a power outage, and I have some backup generators, because sooner or later, the, I got a 380 amp power battery bank, which that lasts me close throughout the night, depends on what I'll, I'll run. You know, just some lights, maybe just refrigerator, and refrigerator doesn't use much power. It's the first start up the surge is when it burns most power, just like anything else. With a heat pump, uh, that, com like, that comes on, I'm making more power than what I'm using. Um, you get a little surge from the, the heat pump when it cuts on during the winter time or during the summer, then it levels out. Okay, instead of burning 5,000 watts or 10,000 watts in the winter, in, in the winter when you get heat strips, if it's real cold that is, it gets a little surge and it levels out. And that's where you save your money. That's how electricity works. All right, well, I'm going to show you my components, okay? All right. Okay, folks, I know this is probably like the same video, same, same thing I do every month, um, but I just want to get the point across of how valuable solar is. And I, my main thing is, to, like I said, is to have power when the power is out. All right. Um, but anyway, you got, you got two panels right here. This one and this one right here. And that top array. That is like a 24 volt, all, all the, and also there's two panels on the back side of the, sh of the little shed. Okay, that makes up for 1,610 watts of solar. And that's like in a 24 volt, two and two up there, two and two, two and two. Six panels up there, two right here, four, four, that pole over there. And that one right there. Each one of these panels is like in between like 135 watts to 145 watts. Each panel is. All right. So that and, and like I said, these panels on the back they're getting a lot of sun right now. It's it's, it's October. It's, it's getting that time of year where it's getting less and less daylight. All right. Okay. The lower array right there. That's an 840 watt array. That's three. And three and three in series 
then bam, then you got three and three and three in series. Then they, then they go into parallel and they come down to a, a battery, uh, MP, PV combiner box, a midnight solar PV combiner box. All right. Uh, also, well, this right here, these panels on, on the on the side of the shed right here, on the front, those are from a small off-grid system, a 12-volt system. That's two 120-watt panels, Alt-E store panels, and it's a 100-watt panel. They're tied all together, three in series. That means they're negative to positive, uh, vice versa, on down the line. Series means they're connected all together. Parallel would be like negative to, po negative, to negative, positive to positive. But opposite in series, it would be like your positive going to your negative, vice versa on down the line. All right. Also, with my big system, the 3,510 watt system, we had the Kira Sierras, and all my pa panels are Kira Sierras except for a few alt, couple Alt E's and some UL Solars. That's a 1,060 watt array. All right, and that puts out extreme amount of power. And those are tied in two and two, oh, excuse me, two and two on the top and two and two. So those panels are like 30 some, 35 volts each. So I'm capable of putting out 70 volts of power. 70 volts with that. That's 1,060 watts. Each panel is 265 watts. So give me a total of 1,060 watts. So all together in my system, it's 3,510 watts of solar. All right, we'll get, zoom in. Zoom out, excuse me. All right, the wind turbines. All right, as you see, they're not turning right now, but it's getting that time of year where we're starting to get a little more wind. Okay, each one of these wind turbines, front, right there, is a 1,000 watt wind max at 24 volt, and to the back here is a, or we say that's the east and that's the west. All right, the back or the e, uh, east salt, uh, wind turbine is also 1,000 water at 24 volts. They put they, they do a really good job. Um, there's some days I wish, man, why do I have these things? But if the, when the wind's blowing, like, man, I wish I had wind turbines. So it's like, kind of like, dang if you do, dang if you don't. But I'm glad I have them. All right. Sorry about that, folks. And, but anyway, it's just super, super. But this is, a, like I said, it's a hybrid system. It's a battery backup. I can be off grid, grid, I mean, grid tie slash load sharing. And the benefit of it at most is when I lose power, I still have power. Okay, that's the importance of, uh, having a hybrid system, all right? It's a little more expensive to have the batteries and, all, and charge controllers and all that kind of stuff, but in the long run, it's worth it. That's just my two cents. Okay, so to me, the main reason I have a solar is when the power is out or when there's no grid, there's no grid power or not any grid power. All right, okay, give a quick rundown of how everything works and how big my house is and what I'm running. All right. Okay, quick rundown. Air conditioning isn't running right now. It's set on eco mode. All right. The solar air heater is running up. It's a cool morning. It's like 47 degrees. That is pumping out the air. You can hear that. You can hear the fan running. Um, down there is the air intake. From inside the building, and it goes through channels. Goes through channels. Then the fan, because hot air rises, and the fan sucks the. It's like a big computer. It's a computer fan. And it sucks the hot air from here and it keeps it keeps all my electronics warm. I mean, not super warm, but enough to be comfortable inside the thing. I also have fans running to keep everything cool. And if it gets real too too hot in there, I got the air conditioner. Well. We'll cut on and cool things down. But that's free power right there that I, I built years ago. Okay, these are this, this, these are included in my 1,610 watt system. These are two 
125 watt UL solar panels. They really help out this time of year in the, the colder months because as you see as the sun's rising up, it's hitting this part of the shop a big, big time. So anyway, and then we got my wind turbines. See, not, not doing much. But anyway, make sure I have everything grounded in your system. I got plenty of space between my roof line or my shingles and my panels. So plenty of airflow. A lot of people talk about uh, the new type of solar shingles and this and that. I, I'm not too impressed with that yet. Uh, not unless you have a cooling system underneath of there, like water uh, um, tubes that can recirculate and keep the panels cool and get another way of giving you hot water from through solar. Because the back of those panels get super hot. Not not to mention the top of them, don't, but I mean, it's like you're having a black roof on your house in the middle of my, on, in Miami, Florida. I mean, that's how hot it get. Or the Sahara Desert, as far as that goes. But yeah, you want air space in between your panels. That's the main key. If you don't have ground mount and you got roof mount, you want air to go in between them. Uh, plus you can check on your panels, make sure there's no critters or wasp nests and all that kind of stuff. But I put these lift kits on there when I, when I redid everything. Give myself plenty of room. All right. All right, we're back. We're back, and uh, another important key is wind. I mean, your weather station. Having a personal weather station. This I'm hooked to weather underground, and it's KV. I think KV. Um, KVA chest 28. That's my, my handle. And anyway, and my anemometer is over here next to my wind turbines. Here's my anemometer, right there. All right, but yeah, weather's, weather's key for our solar. And this is my 1,060 watt array. It's in my garden spot. I get plenty of sun here all year long. I, I lost part of my garden, but I'm gaining valuable power. So it's a give or take, but I got both the best of both worlds. Uh, garden and solar panels. Let's check these puppies out. This is an MT Solar, Montana Solar. Mount, bright mount. Got that from Alt East Tour. All right. And this is each ray right here. What consists of? But the back of that panel right now is warm. Warm. <laughs> but that's what we have for, over here in the, gar the garden arrays. All right. Now, you all listed. I, everything I have is you all listed. That's safety and insurance reasons. All right. Now, here are the panels at work. They're doing the job. Now these, each one of those is 265 watts each. And they are putting out the power. And they're at a 45 degree angle now for the month of October. All right, let's go on to the next stuff. But the garden is doing super, folks. I'll show you a little bit about that. Y'all subject here. The heat pump just shut off. Um, got the pool shut up, um, shut up, winterized for the winter and shut down. But this is a carrier unit, performance 15 series, 16 sear. That is a, the braid one right there. That saves a lot of power. Um, underneath the house is conditioned. I have videos. I'll put links on my video below with everything conditioned. It's got foam block insulation. 
over the whole foundation or the center block underneath the house. Everything is sealed. And then the trunk lines of my, underneath, underneath the house, it circulates warm air in the winter and cool air in the summer. It actually circulates air year round to keep that cool space nice and dry. So in the winter time, when you got that 72 degree or 70 degree air temperature underneath of there, it rises and heats the floor and bam, and, and your air going through your ductwork, you got the, your, you're, it's double purpose. You got heated floors and you got warm air underneath the house. This just does double what you need. So it's a really good thing to have when you, if you have a conditioned crawl space or basement. But that was, that would be one of the first things I'd do if I rebuilt the house or bought an older home like this is. All right, like the pool was shut down for the winter. We just shut that down around the, uh, about a week ago. I'll shut it now. All right, little girl's playhouse. You see my other solar and wind home power videos. That's running. That's got air conditioner and heat. Hadn't turned the heat on yet because I hadn't. It got down to 34 degrees the other the other evening, but nothing um, really major. So I kept air air conditioner still on. Um, garden. All the garden is just doing knockout. Like I said, this is October the 19th. So got tomatoes, green tomatoes on the vines. Look at that. Back. This doesn't do justice. Let me get closer. Got okra. Okra still coming in. Peppers. Oh my God! Look at those peppers. Peppers galore. Are coming in. Jalapeno peppers. I mean, they're just shooting through the roof. There you go. That dough, jalapenos, bells. I mean, you know, we got it. All right. Just getting off track here. My broccoli, plants, my collard greens. They're all coming in. Really good. All right. Tomato, look at this tomatoes, folks. Look, still got blooms. Look at that. Still have blooms. Tomatoes. Oh yeah, nothing like a, a nothing like your, growing your own garden. Oh, got to water it after a while. Hadn't had any water in a while. I had a little rain shower the other day, but but still got blooms and tomatoes just coming everywhere. All right, back to rust. The video. Okay, now we're in the um, the CHA pole barn or garage. We got the deep freeze, excuse me, refrigerator and deep freeze running. That stays running all the time. Uh, battery tenders, they stay running all the time. Um, this little bit of everything. I got air, battery tenders on the small X350 John Deere. The 2350 battery tenders, you know, the small loads, they don't burn much power. Air compressor, I'll shut on when I need it. I don't leave lights on here all the time. And I don't run heat out of here all the time. I run my wood stove, that gives me my heat. Or I got the propane torpedo heater. Um, I got the heat going in here in the office. Okay, to keep it uh, humidity down and just was kind of cool in here this morning. I shut that on before I I'm run a heater in here and I run a heater in my daughter's playhouse to keep the humidity down. And I'm also running ceiling fans. All right. And phantom loads. Cable boxes. They burn some juice. If anything creates heat, 
excuse me, creates heat, creates heat, will burn power. All right. And you know, internet and all that good stuff. So everything burns power. And gun safe. Also have like a golden rod in there to keep the humidity down. That stays running all the time. That probably burns 150 watts or so. All right. Deep freeze refrigerator. That burn all the time. Not all the time, but you know what I mean. When the, the, the compressor cuts on and it regulates itself and it thermostat controlled. Right now. The lights that they're only they're only going when you they're only going when you need it. I mean when you open it. All right, now to the house. And it's like this explanation of how my power is doing and what it's all about. Sort of like my every video I do a month. Nothing's nothing's really changed. But these are long drawn up videos, but I want to more people know. I mean. I'm trying to teach and hope people learn and listen. Um, hot tub. It's 80 degrees, but the pump is running all the time. Um, it, run, it, it runs about, I guess about six cycles a day. The pump comes on and runs for like a half an hour at a time. So that burns juice. This is 240 watts. 240 volts and I think 60 amps. All right, so that's running. But I have the lowest lowest setting. All right. Here's a meter. As you see, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there, not doing a thing. And the heat pump just shut off, so. So it's not a whole lot running in the house. So anyway, I just uh, what else do we have here? That's it. I mean, I run the heat. I'm running 90. I saw I would say my house is 99 percent. Excuse me, 95 percent electric. We got a kitty cat. They're sunning herself, and we still got a ways to go. In this video, but yeah, the uh, lights aren't on during the day. I'm here all the time. Refrigerator, that's just LED li LED lights in here. So that's a big energy saver when you open it. But this only cuts on every so often. Gas stove. All right, this takes about 500 watts during a power outage operate. All right, got gas stove top and gas oven that's a big one there um saves you a little energy doesn't, doesn't use much propane and all but when the power goes out you have a, still have a way to cook that's our main thing people don't think about it but till they lose power like oh no <laughs> you know wish we had a way to do this and yeah now we, well, now we have a way all right uh like i said it's 1500 square foot house Gas logs from a backup. I don't even have the pilot light lit. Uh, reason being because I got the gas stove for another backup in case we need to run. Uh, we can turn the oven on and run heat that way. But yeah, the gas logs are for a backup heat source. It's just, you turn them on in this room, folks, within a matter of five minutes, will run you out of here. But you know, we got the heat travels down you know, through the through the house, it's a rancher, so it does its thing. But when lights aren't in use, I turn them off. That little lamp, I say LED, 60 watt or 60 watt equivalent, like it's like nine watts. That's a you know helps leave that on right much. LED TV that saves a lot of a lot of bread. That's a 48 inch Samsung 4K. Um. You talk to room, and the kitty cat needs a hand getting up. Oh, there she goes. She got it. We keep that so the other crip dog or whatever won't get to it. That way she has her own little private place to eat. All right. Well, here is my reliance transfer switch. So right now we're online. 
And you see there, when I get power, we're staying online all the time. Okay, because it's, it's load sharing to, to the um to the grid. All right, we lose power. We'll flip it where it says Gen right there. That's solar. Flip these switches up. I can run all these switches: microwave, lights, bathroom lights, ceiling fans, every all the necessities. Blower fan above the uh, oven. I mean, above the stove. We can run that. Um, the cable boxes, modems. I can, if you need them. If they're if the cables up, we can run those. Um, everything. I got everything marked up here. Fridge, deep freezing. I got backup power for out there for the shop too. I got powers running from the solar to the big shop also. It's working from a deep freezer refrigerator. All right, storage protection. Got that throughout the, all, the whole property on every every main AC panel. That's a good thing to have for lo low voltages, lightning, or high voltages. It keeps everything regulated. All right, and keep protects your system from getting your capacitors and your heat pump and that kind of stuff. All right, but little tour. Um, got a, fa a lot of phantom loads. People don't realize these burn a lot of electricity. Um, cable cable boxes, they burn a lot of juice. Over time, they do. But. But like I said before, we're using, we're making more power than what we're using. Let's say, and the battery bank just storing power away. LED lights, uh, bathrooms, or bathroom, den, um, little girl's room. Thermostat. We got the heat on now. Okay, heat seventy. We keep it seventy degrees in the winter and summer. We keep that on all year round. I'll probably turn the air conditioner on later on the day. Just it'll get warm. Back bedroom. That's some some old um, clothes from my went shopping the other day. But yes, yeah, a pretty good size room here. This house is built in sunny and Alright, then our bedroom. That's about all I can see of that. Alright. But yeah. Uh, and like I say, you tilt your room and keep the house at a comfortable temperature. Don't want to freeze, don't want to burn up. Alright, well, let's head on out to the solar shop, okay, folks? And all oh, the ghost tomatoes, folks. They are just, look at them. I, I pull them off the vines and uh, off the vine and uh, and I put them on the uh, deck to uh, get some sun and that way they'll turn uh, turn red. Well, you see a lot of them turn red already. Or some of them are already red that I picked. But I picked my green ones and let them soak up in the sun and turn, re turn red and ripen. All right, also that is run on propane. Cause it's no, if you got, if you got a 120 gallon propane tank, no need in putting up little 20 pound bottles. Get, you know, regular gas grill size bottles. All right, let's go to the power shop. And there she is. And to me, folks, my opinion, just my opinion only, or oh, it might be some other people's too, but best way to have power, um, if you want to run a, uh, a house or your property is have the solar power shop away from your house. I wouldn't want a whole bunch of batteries and inverter and all that kind of stuff inside my house. At least, at least in a detached garage or a detached shop. I could either have in that one, that was there before that building, but hey, it, everything works out for a reason. All right, but I got, I, I'll show you. I got solar back got, from my inverter here. Okay, I got power from my outback going underground through conduit. Bam, to the uh, to the shop here. So when the power goes out, I have ways to uh, refrigerator the deep freeze. and I have ways of um, in my office I just showed you out there. I have ways of uh, running my air conditioning and the heat. That's just burning too much power. I put me a little. I put a little Mr. Heater propane heat 
excuse me, if I needed to go out there and use or just run the wood stove. All right, off to the power shop. Oh, the heat pump just cut on. So, yeah, it's probably 50 degrees out here now. There we go. I'm moving. I'm moving at all. All right. And like I say, yes, oh, the, the power company inspected everything. The county inspected everything with the solar system. Uh, everything's been approved. Everything's certified. Everything's been written off. So yeah, we're we're in the green. I just thirty five hundred watts. It's just really not enough to really to sell. I mean, if I'm break even, I'm happy. So in some months, it might be a little higher. 59, I, have a, I have a 59 kilowatt hour bill, or usage, 59 kilowatt hour, which I think it was like $12, something like that, but anyway. All right, here we go. Turn some lights on in here. I'm gonna turn, some, I'm gonna turn these off one minute. Turn the fans off up here. That we got to keep some of my equipment, my charge controllers, and my inverter, everything cool. I just shut them off where y'all could hear me talk. Um, lights, action. All right, that's the uh, solar fan I showed you out there a little bit ago. Um, air heater, that's working. That's at 110 degrees. Temperature blowing out right now at 34% humidity. And that thing, and the cold air intake I was talking about was down there. And it sucks the cold air down there and it comes out up here. And that puppy's going to, let me tell you. All right. And as you see, yep. Yeah. I'm wrong, it's 55 degrees outside right now. Um, 58.5 in here. All right, the inverter temperature is 72 degrees. But this is the flat array on the roof I showed you, the three and three series parallel. It's making 310 watts of solar right now. It's only that, it's, like it's 10 o'clock in the morning. All right. This 1610 watt array, we're bringing in 580 watts. The one in the garden now, that I just kept be showing y'all also, that is producing 660 watts. So we're kicking. So right now, all together, we're producing 1000, right at 1500 watts of power. That's pretty day going good for 10 o'clock in the morning. All right. Battery bank. As you can see here, it's one, two, three, four batteries. Okay. That's 100. Each, uh, that's 380 amp battery. 380 amp hours altogether. It's 190 amp hours to each battery. But when you go 24 volt, it kind of, you know, does its thing. And this this mat is like a heater. It's a hydro mat, hydro farm mat. And this keeps my batteries warm. I got one on each side, and one here, keeping your batteries warm. I got videos on that too. All right. That's what makes keep your batteries toasty warm in the winter. And keeping them cool in the summertime is ideal. 77 degrees is a perfect temperature for batteries. And help them last also. Alright. Uh, battery temps. Right now, they're at 73 degrees. This temperature right now is a little lower than what I want, but it, it'll warm up through the day. It won't be too hot. Power bill time. As you see, that meter is turning, it's cranking. And, that's, and I use this a data log every day. 
on, on a hand. By hand, hand ledger. Look at that meter go. And that is cranking the power, folks. Alright. Power bill time. Are you ready? We've had a real good month. Like I said, I dad log everything. And it's, it goes back to the other oh, previous month too, does it? Like middle of this month. I mean we had a lot we had some 18.9, 19.1 kilowatt hours, 6.1, like I said, partly cloud APC, 15.5, high 87. Um it just it's been kicking. 19.5, 20.5. No, so I'm averaging about anywhere from 15 to 20.5 kilowatt hours a day. Which is super duper. And here we go again. Hand ledger. Um, this to keep data, the temperature and the weather conditions, and how good the solar is doing. 16.2, partly cloudy. Now W stands for wind, how much wind it produced, like peak power that is. Uh, partly cloudy, 18 point, can't read my chicken scratch, 18.9, so yeah, on an average, produce around, like say, 10 to 20 kilowatt hours a day, 20, 21.3, 22.5, 20.1, and we got some rainy days in there, misty rain, 1.7, 3.8, 3.5, they hurt you, it's all, it's all good, it comes, it's just the weather, mother nature, alright, power bill time, you ready? Sorry, this is long dragged out. Eight dollars and forty cents for November seventh, two thousand. Uh, well, bill date is due then, but this is Octo the October bill. Um, usage history. Look at that, folks. Okay, from May, from May until October, I've only burnt two kilowatt hours. That's all summer long. Okay, at least well. Warm, warmer, warmer months was what I meant to say. May through October. Okay, May. May, June, July, August, September. Six months. Two kilowatt hours. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. Alright. Zero kilowatt hours is what we brought this month. Okay, over here. Explanation of bill detail. Okay, this is pretty simple. Distributions are seven bucks. Chester County Utility Tax. This is my county tax. Dollar forty. So seven dollars and dollar forty is eight dollars and forty cent. That's all we owe. Oh, no generation transmission because we didn't use anything. We're good to go. All right. Well, folks, uh, I just wanted to give you a rundown of everything on my electric bill and how everything is going and folks you can't go wrong if you want battery backup power and slash grid power hybrid systems is what this is called but it's a good good thing to have so and the main reason why I did it is to have power when the power is out but also on these nice days when you're making a lot of power I was like, man we should could help get some power out there to help me save some money. Always, you know, got a pretty good investment in your system. So I'm get the best of both worlds. I'm saving money on my electric bill, and I have power when the power's out. A means of power. I can't run my heat pump or my electric hot water heater, my on-demand tankless electric, electric hot water heater, but I have a propane backup or gas backup for my hot water. I got a on-demand tankless propane for. for power outages. So anyway folks that's a rundown. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments please ask. That's what I'm here for. Uh, been in the, I've been in the renewable energy um, now since 2009. I've uh, been interested all my life. I've been in the, with the power company now. Uh, Dominion. Uh, we've been third generation. We've been working with them since um, well, 1935, my grandfather and my father, and then myself. But yeah, it's a it's a great way. I've always been interested in other power 
So in the fossil fuel power, it's great, awesome power. Uh, fossil fuel, nuclear. Um, but when the grid goes down, where you get solar farms or wind power, wind turbines, you need a way to have a backup for your home. Um, protect your protect your family. Keep them comfortable. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe. God bless and simplify. Hey, y'all have a good one, folks. All right, now y'all take care. All right, bye bye.